White screen, pal. Go! Go! Come on! Riding a freaking brake. He's riding a brake. Why don't you just, why do you think you get a brake job every three months? Because you're just freaking riding a brake! Oh, hello? Hello? Uh-huh? Oh, no. No, 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 you can't. You can't. No, no, you can't put me back on hold. I've been on hold for 46 minutes already. I've been here wasting my day. I've been on hold for 46 minutes. I gotta talk to somebody about this. I gotta straighten this out. You can't, you can't just, you can't just, ah! Have life's everyday inconveniences begun to wear your patience down to a nub? Have daily frustrations begun to take the joy out of your life? Perhaps the oil-slicked concrete wasteland of our ever-suburbanizing landscape has finally taken its toll on your soul. If so, we here at the Center for Contemplative Griping have a solution for you. Chicagoland Meditations. For thousands of years, monks of all mystical traditions have contemplated the nature of death and suffering as a means to enlightenment. And so, in that same tradition, we're offering an audio cassette tape series of meditations on the things that make us want to die a little bit inside every day. Chicagoland Meditations. By chanting the names of mundane suburbs and traffic-clogged motorways, we offer a path to confront these things and release their power over us. Arlington Heights. Arlington Heights. Arlington Heights. Bishop Ford. Bishop Ford. So when life has your head in a vice, remember there's a pathway out. Chicagoland Meditations. Today's advertisement for Chicagoland Meditations has been brought to you by Birch Living. Thanks, Birch, for sponsoring this video. Birch makes mattresses crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. Their mattresses are free from polyurethane foam, which can cause harmful off-gassing, and are also free from fiberglass, which can also be harmful to your health. It was important for me to choose a Birch mattress because I can sleep easy knowing that I'm avoiding harmful off-gassing that can result from polyurethane foam. I ordered the Birch Lux Natural Mattress, a premium upgrade to their original well-loved Birch Natural Mattress. I've had my Birch for nine months now, and I love it. What I like most is having a mattress that's environmentally friendly and free from polyurethane foams and the ease of setup. With your Birch mattress, you get a 100-night sleep trial along with a 25-year warranty. The best part about all of this is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the U.S. They also offer in-home setup and removal to make your buying experience as convenient as possible. I love my Birch mattress, and I think you would too. If you're looking to upgrade upgrade your sleep, it's the perfect time to check out Birch Living. You can get 20% off a Birch mattress plus two free EcoRest pillows by visiting the link birchliving.com slash crime pays. That's birchliving.com slash crime pays. Namaste. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Body Doesn't. Today we're back in Minas Gerais, Brazil, in a type of habitat known as Campos Rupestres. We're at an elevation of about, I don't know, 4,300 feet. Was it like 1,200, 1,300 meters? Anyway, as you can see, there's not much soil here. And uh, you've got all these xeric adapt adapted plants like this Ancolerium agavoides, this super rare, newly described species in the bromeliad family, which uh, obviously looks like an agave. It's covered in this white pubescence and forms these clumping leaf rows. That's it's amazing. And we came here to see this, but I didn't even make it to this plant. This is footage that uh, my friend Dylan was kind enough to share with me. I didn't even make it up here because I was too preoccupied marveling at the convergent evolution that I saw down below among all these unrelated plants that had taken on this really cool phylotaxy, this really cool leaf habit of these, these sclerophyllous kind of stiff 
imbricate leaves that uh, uh, were mostly sessile on the branch and almost looked like snake scales. They were like the, oh, these overlapping leaves. Really cool. Obviously an adaptation to the nutrient-poor quartzitic sandstone here, as well as the long dry season. This isn't quite a desert. It's more seasonally dry, tropical climate. Anyway, let's check it out. Here we go. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Botany Doesn't. We're here in Minas Gerais, Brazil going to look at a very rare species in the bromeliad family Ancolerium agavoides only described I believe uh, I don't know five seven years ago something like that you see that the, the uh, habitat here is absolutely insane uh, there's a number of botanists working on different uh, plant families here but there's still a lot I mean there's so much diversity here it's one of the most biodiverse places I've ever been to and I've been to South Africa as well this is probably more insane than uh, South Africa and and pretty understudied uh, there's people working on it, but there's still a lot of, lot of work to do. So a lot of botanists and universities uh, in uh, Brazil trying to uh, put the puzzle pieces together, como se dice, in terms of uh, taxonomy, phylogenies, and uh, ecology. Anyway, we're going to go see what else we got going on. Hopefully we make it to this plant. It's the 10 kilometers or more uphill, and uh, <laughs> I can't imagine we're going to be moving too fast. At least I'm not. There's just too much good shit to see. Here we go. Okay, there we go. We uh, just uh, got off the main road, hit the trail. Look at all the pieces of quartz in the ground. Just weathered out of this very old uh, quartzitic metamorphosed sandstone. Sandstones and granites. There's quartz everywhere. Anyway, here we go. Only got a few hundred meters to go up. Look, some sort of damn Sace Alpinoid pea with imbricate leaves. It's amazing. You encounter the same kind of habitats all over the globe. See the same kinds of traits among the uh, plants. These seasonally dry, lots of melastomes, velosia. Look at this curious bastard. What the shit? What is that? Tons of stamens. What does the ovary look like? Check out the sepals. No idea. I have to take a bunch of photos. Look at the venation on those leaves. Almost looks like a sumac. Take a bunch of photos, figure it out later. What the shit is all this? It's probably a Barbacenia Velosiaceae. You could see the uh, fruit on it. Beautiful flowers when these go off. Look at those fruits. Ooh, look at the glands. The shit is this? Looks rubiaceous with that four-petaled flower. Almost like some of the Stenarias or Houstonias that you get in uh, Texas. Same general floral shape, but it's purple. It's got imbricate leaves. Looks like a damn manzanita. You just get your mind blown so frequently down here. Here's Malpigiaceae. This might be the genus here. Look at those glands at the base of the flower. Velvety everything, because we're in a seasonally dry environment. See those hairs on the undersides of the leaves? Fucking wild. You can see a lot of land converted to pasture. You know, this is what I'm talking about, is seeing the same convergence, the same uh, the same uh, plant traits, morphological traits among unrelated plants. Here's a member of the sunflower family, Asteraceae, that's doing the whole uh, imbricate glaucus leaf thing. And look at all the wax on it. Look at it. You can see, look at the intense farina. You can see it almost wiping off. This is a popular model of phyllotaxy among the plants here. I'll show you a, a pea that's doing the same thing. There you go. Completely different order, family, etc. And there's a pea. You can see the legume. That's also doing uh, that whole uh, imbricate glaucus and uh, waxy leaf thing. See that? It's not in a flower, so, you know. <laughs> I think I've been seeing this genus a lot. I saw one yesterday where the uh, fruit, that legume fruit, was entirely covered in glandular hairs. It looked like, you know, very sticky weed. Look at that. All right, all these things arriving, evolutionarily arriving at the same solution to the selection pressures of the environment that they grow in. All right, there's another pea. This shit is that. Look, waxy, glaucous leaves. No hairs on that, just very waxy. Oh yeah, look at the, look at the glands on that. And there's those bean fruits, see that? Probably a sace alpinoid, subfamily of the pea family. But really, I'm talking on my ass because I have no idea. There's just too much weird shit here. This looks like that guy I was just showing you, the the one with the uh, the one back there. See that? Say saponoid flowers. Ooh, that's a that's a phylum Barnadesia subfamily, most basal family of the sunflower family, most basal subfamily. Excuse me. And again, imbricate leaves. Love to see that one that the flower head opens. 
not blooming yet. Oh, maybe it already, maybe it just finished. Anyway, another uh, member of Astraceae, another sunflower. This is actually technically an ironweed, though. Let's see if we can get some flowers still intact up here. Looks like it's Vernonia. Actually, I'm, you know, I might be talking completely on my ass. Looks like discoid flowers with multiple uh, series of phyleries, four or five series of phyleries. What the shit? Look, there's an exceptional specimen of that damn rubioid bastard, that beautiful member of the coffee family, Rubiaceae. Those purple flowers. You can see this guy's doing the same thing. Imbricate, waxy, glaucous leaves. Perfolia without a petiole. Actually, auriculate. Like an ear, just clasping that stem. God, that's so cool. Everything is doing this. This is the popular model. This is what they're doing now. These are what the kids are doing now with their TikTok videos and stuff. Look at a tube flower going for hummer pollination or what? Look, there's a Dazophyllum. Barnadesia subfamily. It's just got the, the look of it. Look at the hairs. Dude, look at all those trichomes. Barnadesioid trichomes. I got a name for that. You can see those styles poking out. Flower looks like it's done. Multiple phyleries. You get four or five series of phyleries and an involucre. The leaves, again, gla glaucous, waxy, and tapering in a little point. Man, being here is just like having your mind perpetually blown. I love these dry habitats. Can you tell? You can see we're going up this uh, somewhat intense trail. Here's an oxalis species, a shrubby oxalis, a woody oxalis, of which Chile has quite a few. I didn't know Brazil had its own fair share as well. Oxalis leaves. And, uh, you know, the plant colloquially known as wood sorrel. But, you know, let's not use common names. If you can learn a common name, you can learn a genus name. You got a nice palm up there. Look, a nice dwarf palm. This is another composite that's really taken the uh, aracoid leaf thing to a new level. Looks like a juniper. All right. But it's actually a relative of uh, the plant colloquially known as ironweed in the Midwest and Southeast. This is a uh, trivernonii of Astraceae, the sunflower family. And who doesn't love a male pig? Huh? Como se dice sclerophyll vegetation. Opposite leaves. You got nice leaf bracts right there. Look at that. Velvety indumentum on the underside, but typical and unmistakable male pig flower. Male pigiaceae is the family right there. Very diverse down here. You can see those green glands that secrete lipids that attract the pollinators, the bees to get in there and collect those, uh, those lipid molecules. So anyway, when you get to the top of the first hill, I got another hill for you to go up, okay? We got to get a guy up there. Dot com. Oh, shit. Look at the ground. It's just nearly pure quartz. I'm going to be a little winded. Sorry. We're doing like 15 miles today. Oh, who's this? Is that a lanioid? Is that a salvia? Or a verbena? Verbenaceae. Same order, different families. Lamiaceae and verbenaceae, respectively. That looks like maybe verbenaceae. But I don't want to have to edit it out afterwards if I fuck it up. So let's just say order Lamiales for sure. Haven't been able to sniff it yet, but look at how woolly and fuzzy and generally tomatose those calices are. And again, glaucous leaves with a scabbard texture. You got, you got a little coat of hairs on the underside. God, but still certainly coriaceous and leathery like so many of the plants here. You know, I was just going to say, does this stuff burn? And looking from uh, the trunk of that uh, Velosia, nice Caliandra. Uh, it appears it does burn, as you would expect. Who knows what the fire frequency is? Who knows uh, if it's increased? Who knows uh, how fire adapted some of this stuff is? The dry season is the cooler season here. It, it's uh, pretty rainy during the hot season, during the summer. So different from the Mediterranean climate you get in California. Look at that nice wall of quartz right there. That's pretty good. This grass is loving it. This bamboo, kind of like a meaner bamboo. Kind of looks like uh, the Graceliani I saw in New Caledonia. Jesus. Look at that, a bizarre melastome. Look at those anthers, they give it right away. Look at that, dimorphic anthers, and you got those connectives, too. Wait, are those dimorphic? Uh, Porocidal anthers, though, for sure, for buzz pollination by the bees. You can see they bend down. 
they like their reflex and those that yellow stuff right there is what the what draws the bees in thinking they're collecting pollen maybe there's a little bit of feeder pollen on there and then uh they get dusted with a, a jet of pollen from those uh those poor anthers down there those brown things and then the style of course as you can see is at the bottom of that flower that little hooked style which uh hopefully collects pollen off the bee's uh, stomach abdomen that they brought in from uh, another flower God, melisms are so cool and incredibly diverse. Look at this guy, Voichisiaci, Order Mertales. No idea what's going on with the flowers there. I just pissed off those ants. But again, glaucus, waxy leaves, coriaceous. There's the fruits. Man, it's a weird, weird uh, three-lobed capsule. They get a lot taller than that. They could become small trees. Look at it. That's all Velosia. Those black trunks poking up. Order Pandanales, Velosiaceae is the family. Very species-rich down here in Brazil. And uh, we're basically walking on quartz. Some donkey shit back there. It's, I need a mule, man. I need a donkey. Uh, who's this? Got a cactus. Sippo serious? Jesus Christ, how old is it? I wonder how hot it is here in summer. It's very pleasant right now. Just growing beneath the uh, legume. Looks mimosoid. You got any thorns on there? No, it must be pretty toxic then. It's not using spines. The tree's probably using, I would assume, using... Uh, Secondary chemistry. Yeah, here's a tree gook, Nadia. Mokini astrum. Is the genus there? Or is it, uh, does it have those aggregated secondary capitula? It could be a Vernonia. Now it looks like a Mokini astrum. Looks like a Gocknadioid subfamily. Look at the undersides of those leaves, too. Anyway, a sunflower. Remember the sunflower family, Asteraceae. That's wild, man. Forming a nice little tree. Who's that guy? Who's that guy looking at me over there? Look at that. See that little guy? What's he doing over there? What are you doing? What are you doing? It almost looks like one of those damn kissing bugs, but I'm no entomologist. Landscape of quartz. You can see they got tubes up there bringing water down. You can hear the water in there. Look at this. So this all looks like sandstone. Very old sandstone that was probably deposited, then perhaps later buried. Either way, somehow it came in contact with a heat source, with a magma source. And uh, now you've got all this quartz in it. But uh, I might be fucking up the geology here. I mean, it's certainly sandstone, but who knows where the quartz comes from. Either way, at some point, these rocks were buried quite deep. That's what, uh, that's what I presume from all the quartz. The abundance of quartz here is just insane. And a lot of this state, Minas Gerais, looks like this. You get these just quartz fields everywhere. Kind of like you get in uh, South Africa and parts of Namibia. See, quartzitic sandstone, metamorphosed sandstone, cooked sandstone with a lot of quartz in it. So at some point, it was buried and subjected to a lot of depth and pressure. Look at those. Look at it over there. You can still kind of see the strata, the layers. Uh, we're only like halfway up. That looks fun. Another cool melastome. Jesus Christ. Imbricate leaves, lanceolate, all this ericoid foliage, adaptations to a dry environment. Let's look at those flowers though. You can see those anther connectives. You got the style on the bottom. Porcidal anthers. Look at that. Look at how big those anthers are. They're kind of like the boomerang shape. They come up. And then they come out like a sickle. And then at the, the joint of the sickle, you could see they've got that other uh, source of the uh, pollen. It's kind of like a, I don't know if that's a, what do you call it, a staminode or something? Either way, it's putting out feeder pollen. That's what attracts the bees. And then those underside of the sickle gets the, uh, shoots the stream of pollen onto the bee's uh, abdomen. And it seems to work for them because a lot of these melastomes do that. You can see they've all got that similar ant anther shape, or at least a lot of them do. There's, I mean, there's a lot of species in the family. There we go. There's a Velosia in bloom. Look at that. Look at that glandular-ass ovary down there, too. That will later turn in. Oh, my God. That's insane. That's hilarious. Will later turn into the fruit. Look at those glands. And uh, look at the flower morphology of those. Wow. Multiple stamens. Triffid stigma, because it's a monocot. And then there's the rest of the plant. You can see, looks like it came back from a burn. Just re-sprouted from dormant buds, buds after it burned. What a cool genus, what a cool family. The bees are loving this composite. Is that a youp? What is that? I don't even know, I have no idea. 
God, it's so weird. That's a sunflower. Now the soil's becoming more sandy and it's getting more lush. There's less of that quartz directly exposed on the ground. There's more grass. God, what was it like first uh, collecting in this area, you know? Come up here with a donkey and a plant press. Just collect a shit ton of herbarium specimens. God, love to see those notebooks. The notebooks they kept it logged, kept track of all the stuff they collected. Okay, a little higher, a little cooler. There's a nice breeze and we're starting to get some of that Areocalaceae family diversity that uh, Brazil is so well known for. Areocalaceae is the family there. Basically got a flower head. Areocalaceae is uh, in the same order as grass. It's a family that's related. It's a graminoid family. It's basically related to grass. You get a few species in uh, the southeast. I don't think you get any. How many do you get in California? Maybe you get a couple. But... Uh, not that many. Certainly not as many as you do here. Look at this. This is an Areocalaceae too. Actinocephalus brongnardii. It's an Actinocephalus. I don't know if it's uh, that exact species. I don't know the family that well. But still, that's, that's remarkable. Look at it. Look at that. Holy shit. You get rosette leaves. It's a coalescent rosette monocot with very stiff coriaceous leaf blades. Look at the uh, margins of those two, look at those hairs. Yeah, it looks like a grass, I'll give it that, see? But you got these dense inflorescences, an inflorescence of inflorescences, because each one of those little white balls has uh, it's composed of tiny flowers. God, that's wild. Having your mind blown 24 seven here in Brazil. Here's a somewhat closely related family, Zeridaceae, with an X. Yellow flowers again, you got an involucre, you got a, uh, a, a pseudo inflorescence, a pseudanthium. And there's those leaf blades almost looking like an iris down there. See that? Sheathing, kind of sword shaped leaf blades. A lot of sun came back out, it was cloudy for a minute. Here's a very glandular, very sticky, and it smells quite good, member of the Eupatoria tribe, the uh, Joe Pye tribe, the Stevia tribe. Look at those long styles. Asteraceae is the family. Look how down, how far down they fork too. Rather than splitting, you know, at the, towards the top of the style, they split, they fork down below. God damn, what is going on with those florets too? They're, look, they're so fuzzy. The individual flowers in that head are so fuzzy. Glandular as hell, smells pretty good. Just growing on a escarpment of sandstone. Jesus. Oh, that's a nice sedge. Can't forget the sedges. Oh no, you know what? That might be junk AC. God damn it. Look at that glaucous blue. Look at that. God damn. Now it seems for the most part, we got most of the elevation done, but I'm not hopeful that there's not gonna be more. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> God. Oh yeah. See that? So it's like a little plateau. And then, uh, oh my God. Is that a composite down there? What is that thing? <laughs> oh my God. The Asteraceae diversity here is nuts. It's absolutely nuts. What am I freaking nuts? Look, you got scapes coming up, woolly scapes coming up from uh, rosetted leaves. And uh, there's the ligules right there. So is it muticioid? Yeah, it looks like it. Those corollas, even the disc, disc corollas look uh, bilabiate or trilabiate instead of having the five lobes. God, that's a, that is a fucking flower head, man. You can see that thing is everywhere, too. Look at it, you got a compound, you got a sunflower that looks like a spruce in the ironweed tribe. Vernoni. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I'm not prepared for this. I'm not prepared for this level of uh, mania. Purple fused anther tubes, purple styles. 
and a five lobed disc corollas, no ligules, and a ericoid veg. Oh, look, you got these leaves longer than uh, the others. Are those you got secondary inflorescences there, too, or what? Jesus Christ, man. Landscape of quartz, too. It's a lot easier when you're not going directly uphill anymore. Oh, look at that cactus over there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, here's that dwarf palm. You can see it's got this large bract protecting its inflorescence. And uh, there are the flowers. Are they even open still? Can't really tell. Sorry, the lighting is kind of shit. Uh, not really. Anyway. A seasonally dry scrubland palm from uh, these uh, very nutrient-poor quartzitic soils. Look, here's that cactus again. Look, it's got it's got a blue perianth. A blue hippanthium. Excuse me. Look, it's got a blue hippanthium. Siposirius is the genus here. A lot of ribs. You got a whole lot of ribs on those. Look at those. These flowers haven't uh, popped out yet. What is the adaptive benefit of that blue pigment? I wonder. Or is there one? Maybe there's not. It's growing right up the uh, this uh, sandstone. And then there's the fruit. Pop it open. Get a. Uh, is it even ready yet? Looks like it is. It came off readily. Wonder what the spurs is. It mammals, birds, what? Like Brazilian cactus diversity. Look at that. There's a nice money shot with the landscape in the background, with that plateau in the background gently rising. Here's a nice specimen of that spruce vernonia again. Look at that. You can see it's getting more sun since it's not the, on that slope. And it's uh, it's already bursting into flower. You can see those buds are orange when they're coming out. That's insane. Looks like a spruce, but it's an ironweed. Look at that. Look at those flower heads. Look at that. So is it, it's an inflorescence of a bunch of different heads. Are they single florid heads or what? I don't know. I didn't dissect one. A lot of the Vernonias here do that. A head of heads. I already know I'm not going to make it to the target plant, and that's okay, because I'm just perpetually having my mind blown over here. <laughs> Look at this. It's got escape. The leaves are, uh, of course, covered. Uh, oh, they're very scabbard. Coriaceous and very scabbard. Look at those hairs on there. God damn it. <laughs> and there's the head. I can't even tell. Is that the Corolla? Or... God damn it. Is the yellow part the Corolla? So you got two Corollas in there. Or it's just got paleo. Those are just the receptacular brakes. Flip it over. There's the underside. Whole thing's covered in a rusty indumentum. Just absolutely insane. <laughs> just fucking wild, man. What are you doing? You get this purple member of Velosiaceae too. Is it a Velosia or a Barbacenia? Look at that. Very nice flowers. Purple flowers. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that field of Velosias down there. That's nuts. Look at the fields of Velosia. Just hills just covered in Velosia. And there yeah, you get that spruce ironweed as well. Oh, what the landscape's doing it's trying to make sure i don't get anywhere there's that palm there's just too much cool stuff to look at luckily this melastome is almost done look at those leaves <laughs> that's insane still got that uh, melastoma tasty venation on them flowers are mostly done there's that style that long hook style god this is insane look there's the lantana family verbenaceae what is that olipia I guess that's one way to do it. Again, ericoid leaves, coriaceous foliage, scabbard. Feels like you got some glands on there. Doesn't really smell like anything. But uh, those flowers, there you go. Lantana family flowers, verbenaceae. Bunch of them, tiny, all aggregated together. Waxy, leathery leaves, waxy, coriaceous leaves, decussate, and imbricate. Alternating pairs of uh, opposite leaves. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now look at this. Actually, this is this is Lithraceae. This is Lithraceae. It's not a melastome. See, it's got six petals and uh, the anthers. It doesn't doesn't uh, have the uh, look of uh, the melastomataceae. And the fruits look much different, too, if you look at those fruits in the background right there. So loosestrife family. But it's also doing the imbricate leaf thing, glabrous, waxy, glaucous, etc. God, that's hilarious. Yeah, six petals. Lithraceae is weird because uh, they get some of them get six petals, which is weird for uh, a Uticot. You know, normally the 
multiples of three you get with uh, monocots. Okay, so it just got a little hairy for a minute uh, with uh, some private property owners. There were kids working for somebody, but uh, they said I could pass, so <laughs> it was fine. Anyway, here's that Lithraceae again. Look at that. Look at that thing. The floor here is otherworldly. It's absolutely insane. And then you got the, the Sace Alpinoid pea. I don't know if this is a different one or what, but it's flushing. It's flushing pure red from those stress pigments. As you can see right there, imbricate leaves, glabrous, waxy. Looks like a damn one of those uh, weird eucalyptus. And there's the uh, fruits, as you can see. Totally bizarre. I wasn't expecting to see that. There's a there's a dryland orchid, and it actually smells pretty good. Look at that labellum. Looks uh, it looks somewhat sickle shaped almost. You got those uh, that got anther cap up there. Plenty. Of, is it off for nectar? What well, smells pretty nice. You can see there's the old leaves right there. No leaves right now, it's dormant. We're in the dry season here in the winter. You can see the old leaf abscission scars too on that thing. God, that's insane. That is so hilarious. What are you doing over there, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? Not calm. Here you go, here's another Velosiaceae. Looks like a uh, Barbicinia. Could be could be a Velosia. Look at look at that. Look at how glandular that ovary is. Did you see that? God damn, it's insane. So sticky. You got multiple anthers and a, uh, a triffid stigma. Look at this guy. Orobankesi is the family here. Look at that. That spruce ironweed. Orobankesi is the family here. Look at those fuzzy anthers. Look at how those uh, petals bend outwards, too. They're kind of fused and recurved. They create a little lip. The whole flower's hairy. Wonder what he's uh, parasitizing, because Orban Casey, they're all partial or total parasites. So is he parasitizing a composite down there or a grass or what? Or maybe this shrubby, these shrubby ones aren't parasitic. Who knows? Pretty impressive though. God damn. <laughs> Another weird variation on a theme. Paintbrush family, Oral Bank Casey. Fuzzy anthers. Look at how fuzzy they are. God damn, they're covered in hairs. You got hairs on the perianth. But glabrous foliage. Obviously going for hummer pollination. And here's what the fruits look like. Just a dry capsule. Saw this thing yesterday. But again, that convergent trait out here in these uh, seasonally dry scrublands in the Sahara. That uh, waxy imbricate foliage. God, that's so crazy, man. I just, yeah, I can't take having my mind blow, blown this much. It's too much. I can't take having my mind blown this much. It's too much. God damn, look at that landscape. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it to this plant, and that's fine with me. There's just too much stuff to see and photograph. Sorry. <laughs> Ankle Lirum will have to wait. It's like another six miles, and it's already mid afternoon. I'm going to have to come back down. I'm out of water. But uh, I'm going to keep going for a little bit because there's a lot of good stuff up here. There's that pea again. That Sace Alpinoid pea. Check out these quartz fields. You see that? Quartz and the ironstone everywhere. Got a nice waterfall over there as well. Probably some cool endemics growing over there. Probably quite a few undescribed species as well. I'm sure the botanist here will get to it one day. It's unbelievable to think about the stuff that's over there, the diversity here. Look at that flaky minerals and giant crystals of quartz just uh, coming right out the ground. Pretty, pretty cool geology, just quartz everywhere, just a landscape of quartz. So that's where I came from, down there. That's where we came up. Head back, yeah, because I still got like five miles to go, it's just not gonna happen. I'm out of water, there's probably not much water up there, too. Well, there's a little creek where that waterfall is, I guess. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Sorry to get your hopes up about Ankylaria magavoides. Here's a cool aeroid. What is that, a philodendron? Some bizarre anthurium. No flower spike, and I'm not an aeroid guy. It's cool to see either way. Well, I didn't see this coming down. This is pretty, this is pretty fucking weird. 
looks like a Tillandsia. You can see it's got intensely tomentose leaves. This monocot, this rosette leaved monocot, the uh, leaves are uh, revolute, they're, fur they're folding in. There's the fruit, it's Velosiaceae, which uh, becomes obvious when you see that, fr that fruit with that, that distinct texture. So what the shit, <laughs> it's just, and it's sitting here completely dried out, but not dead, just dormant. Many of these uh, are poikilohydric, looks like something got the seeds. Poikilohydric, you know, like, like some ferns can be, they can dry out completely and then upon uh, cooler temps and moisture, they just come right back to life. God, that's insane. And it, you can see it's just coating, that's just coating the, uh, the hillside here. There's a nice bromeliad. Is that a dickey or something? Dickey or Encolirium? Yeah, probably a dickey, huh? This, here's another member of Velosiaceae. Not dead, just dormant. Just completely uh, dried out, waiting for moisture. We're in the dry season now. I wonder what they look like in summer. You know, they got that candelabra shape with that stem, which is just the uh, old leaves. Just old leaf sheaths. See, it, the the bottom part of the leaf kind of stays on there, and then the rest, the uh, rest of the leaf dies. And as it grows, so there's a very old. Uh, as it grows, the leaves fall off, and it forms that candelabra shape. So those are probably pretty old plants, a few decades at least. God, the Asteraceae diversity here is just too nuts. I can't take it. See that that thing that looks like a spruce is Asteraceae. That uh, that woolly bastard with the scape. That white thing with the big lamb's ears at the bot at the uh, base. That's a Member of Asteraceae. There's another Asteraceae. You got this this quartzitic sandstone. This quartzite. Not a bad day. 12 miles round trip. Still not back yet. Out of water. Met some sketchy lads. They didn't seem sketchy. They just seemed young and dumb and kind of mean. Which can, uh, can make for trouble. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Holy shit, look at that uh, verbenaceae again. It's a lipia. God damn it, that's so weird. It is so weird. Glandular. Everything converging on the same habits. Monocolis, somewhat, you know, only one stem, sometimes branching. Imbricate leaves, ericoid leaves, waxy, coriaceous, leathery. That's chlorophyll vegetation. It's so weird. You see so many families you're familiar with in North America doing the same thing in this habitat. And they look nothing like the plants you know, except for the flowers. Just some vultures soaring, that was nice. Anyway, that's all I got. Look at that Velosia over there, see that? There's Velosia population on the outside. That's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself, bye. Nice Ankylerium subsecundum. It's like a damn dicky, and look at that. Look at the fucking layers upon layers. How old? Half a billion years, maybe a little bit older. It's, it, it's got to be old enough for this rock to have been laid down in an ocean, then buried, metamorphosed, cooked a little bit, and, uh, and then uplifted again. All right, this is weird. So you got this opposite leaf bastard right here. Coriaceous leaves, of course, because this is the sclerophyll vegetation. Uh, and it looks like it would be Asteraceae. Look at those flower heads. I thought it was for a minute. And then uh, I got pulled one off. They smell really good. I looked up close and it's completely, uh, it's totally not Asteraceae. There's no individual florets. It's just uh, one flower coming out of what looks like an Asteraceae and Volucker. And you got how many uh, stamens? Five stamens poking out. Completely different floral morphology than a composite family. It smells really good. And it's being parasitized by this... Uh, this vine right here too, which is also cool. You can see it's tapped into that uh, hostorial, yeah, a hostorial root, see that? This, this other plant, this parasite is just, just scrambling around it and then got the, tapped into his vasculature. That's pretty cool, no idea what it is. <laughs> it smells good, take photos, document it, figure it out later. This is cool, this is obviously a bat pollinated member of a Pocinaceae, so you could tell by those uh those five fused petals that uh, kind of spiral around each other one overlaps the other which overlaps the other behind it and then look inside and uh let's fucking see that right down there smells pleasant enough 
but big white flowers pollinated by bats. If that was a little bit narrower, I'd say maybe moths, but and of course you got that sclerophyll, that coriaceous, those coriaceous opposite leaves. Oh, look at that, it's bleeding latex too. That's where we were up there, and then we're standing beneath this, uh, this cool fey bed. I almost thought it was a jacaranda at first. It's got purple flowers and pinnate leaves, but it looks like a, actually looks like a purple legume. You can see there's the, uh, the fruit maturing right there. Oh, there's not that much light. There's the fruit maturing a little legume pod. Got the style on the end of it. And then purple, deep purple calyces and then violet uh, petals. God damn it, that's insane. <laughs> that is insane. So how many times have I said that today? It's insane. Look at those, those stamens. are just kind of like twirling around, spiraling around in there. Whatever it is, it's bat pollinated. Look at all those stamens in a ring around the perianth. Once uh, the flower matures, I just pulled the stamens out of this one. You can see that style leads down to that fruit down there. What an eloquent goddamn flower. And just big enough for a bat's head. Here's what the fruits look like when they mature. But it's bat pollinated. And it's uh, the guava family. Actually, it may not even be the guava family. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I have no idea. Opposite leaves, coriaceous, sclerophyll vegetation. God damn it. What a variation on the theme, huh? All right, I take it back. I don't know what the shit family that is. I'm guessing Mertesi. It kind of looks like it, but there's a number of things throwing me off. Maybe Mertales. Maybe not even. But there's a mature flower. Ooh, it's erect. You could see it's uh, just waiting. Hopefully, probably going to get hit tonight by a bat. What, dozen, two dozen stamens? Banana-shaped anthers, and then that long style poking out. You could see that's these old uh, stamens down there. And those fruits, who knows when they'll mature, probably another, another few weeks, who knows.